Hi, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. I wanted to join with many of my fellow humans on this planet in condemning the outrageous attacks of the nation of Israel and no I will not call it by its official designation the state of Israel upon Palestine Palestine was there before modern Israel was there before the future to be Israeli citizens moved into Israel they came in destroyed the homes of Palestinians kill Palestinians and move the others into prison camps the long-standing claim that Palestine was an uninhabited desert region before Israel was established is nothing but a bald-faced lie there was a society there there were people there there were women there were children there were men there It was a place where people raised their families, worked, and sent their children to school. And here we are, decades from the founding of the nation of Israel in 1947, and where have we come? nowhere we still have politicians who I will not name I don't want to give them the privilege of publicity who are saying such things as one might expect we stand in solidarity with our partner Israel I never remember most Western countries making similar claims about South Africa when South Africa practiced apartheid. Instead, South Africa was regularly condemned by the West for what it was doing. Why then is the same outrage not being shown to the nation of Israel The answer is simple. Geopolitics. Geopolitics. The location of Israel in the Middle East, the only supposed democratic republic in that area. I would, however, remove the word democratic from it and simply call it a republic, if that. My own country, the U.S., was not, for instance, a democracy until the 1960s with the passage of the Voting Rights Act. There was not universal access to voting. Jim Crow laws were in effect. Now, here, in my own country, which I am ashamed to live in, the U.S., we are bringing back Jim Crow laws. It should not be a surprise to any of us that there is no outrage, no demand from Western countries that Israel immediately withdraw from Palestine and go back to Israel. None. 
none at all. Silence, pure silence, the sound of silence is all that can be heard. It is purely and totally disgusting. It makes me ashamed to be a human being. What's more, it makes me ashamed to be a person of Ashkenazi Jewish heritage on both sides of my family. I went to Hebrew school. I was bar mitzvahed. I made Brit Malah, meaning I went through the, cov the covenant of circumcision. By every usual measure, I was Jewish. I left Judaism in 1970, not because of Israel. I never could care less about Israel. I left it for a religion which I felt suited me better. But now, I couldn't be happier that I am out of that horrendous religion which tolerates this behavior. Now, I should qualify. Not all Jews support the actions of Israel. Many people assume that most American Jews are Zionists. Well, I don't know the, the precise statistics or demographics, so I can't really answer that question. What I can say is I know a lot of Jews in the United States who are anti-Zionist. So, when I see this kind of, of, of uproar, oh, how dare these Palestinians send bombs into Israel. I wonder how they would feel if someone said, when Jews were being kept in concentration camps by the Germans during World War II, if they had access to bombs, which of course they did not, and they lobbed those bombs at the SS officers, would that be seen as an atrocity as well? I certainly doubt it. It is pure and total hypocrisy, and we are the living witnesses to it. I don't know what the solution is. What we are seeing literally is a conflict between the first world and the third world or the fourth world. Israel is a first world country. It is a colonizer and it, it practiced the usual tactics of colonialism by destroying those homes and killing those families. The Palestinian territories are third world in the sense that they fall below the threshold, the economic threshold, which is generally assigned to first world countries. It is also fourth world because the people living in Palestine are among the subaltern, a term which was redefined by the late Italian Marxist Antonio Gramsci to mean the people at the bottom of the social pyramid, the people who literally have no power at all. When they speak, no one listens. They are literally below the proletariat. They may have class consciousness, but no one cares. 
I have known people who were subaltern. Their lives were totally miserable. I come from a proletarian or working class family. My father was an optician. He made eyeglasses. My mother was a teacher aide. We got by, but barely got by. Living in New York City, then moving to a relatively low income suburb of New York City on Long Island, we survived. I have nothing to complain about, especially now that by misfortune, I would say, I have become nouveau riche. I don't want to be nouveau riche. But I am living as if I am still a proletarian. The money that remains after my death will go to charity. So although I am genealogically Jewish, it is nothing that I am proud of. It's nothing I'm ashamed of either. I'm not ashamed to be from a Jewish background. I am ashamed to be from a culture in which there are so many Zionists, so many militant Zionists who literally support this kind of South African style apartheid, if not worse, taking place in the Near East, in Israel, in Palestine. My solution? Well, my solution is simply wishful thinking. It will never happen, or I doubt it will ever happen. Those damn Israelis who support King Bibi, Benjamin Netanyahu, should go back to where they came from or their parents or their grandparents came from they should go back to Europe they should go back to the United States they should go back to Canada they should go back to Australia New Zealand or wherever leave Israel alone you have shown yourself as unworthy to occupy the once holy land and hopefully at some point in the future that once holy land not holy anymore will become the holy land again this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. Please pray for the Palestinians.